Hi folks, so now we're still talking about learning and indeed now we're going to move to talking about the DeGroot model. And um, in terms of our outline, we talked a little bit about Bayesian learning and now we'll talk much more about, uh, and there's a lot more to say about Bayesian learning, but um, we're not going to have time for that here. Um, but we can look now at the DeGroot model, which is a model of repeated communication and a more naive updating. So it has advantages and disadvantages. <clears throat> In terms of advantages, the model is going to be quite simple and mathematically elegant, and it'll bring network structure in in a very easy way, and uh, will be very powerful in terms of, of what we can work, how we can work with it, and what kinds of things we can deduce. Um, it also it turns out that that people, even operating in this very somewhat naive updating way, will be very accurate and can can do good things in in uh, terms of convergence. Um, and so that this can have nice convergence properties, even though people don't act in a very sophisticated way. Um, the limitations are going to be that, that we won't have a lot of strategy in this model, so it's going to be a more mechanical model in terms of the way that it updates, but it can still be a very useful model for understanding some uh, behavior. So what we'll do here is uh, we're going to spend a little more time with this model. We'll go through basic definitions. Um, and then we'll, after we've done those, we'll talk about uh, things like when is there convergence, when is there a consensus. Um, this model is going to be very nice in terms of allowing us to figure out who has influence. And who has influence in this model is going to relate back to some of the things that we talked about earlier in our centrality measures, like eigenvector centrality. So it'll give a nice foundation for some of those measures that we saw earlier in the course. And we can also ask, you know, when is it that the estimates that people are, are making turn out to be accurate. So there's a lot that we can do with this model. It's a very useful model in, in many ways. Okay, so this, the structure now is going to be a little different than what we saw before. Um, here, the information is going to come in only once at the beginning. So people are going to start with some initial beliefs, and then you're talking to your neighbors, you're talking to your friends. So there'll be repeated communication, and um, we'll see how the, the information disseminates, who has influence, uh, What's the convergence speed? Um, how does network structure impact all of this? So there's a lot of things that we can analyze here um, fairly accurately. Okay. Um, bounded rationality here. So what's going to happen is individuals are going to repeatedly average the beliefs that they have. So they'll get information from their neighbors. They, so, for instance, we might say, uh, what are, what's the probability that I think that there's global warming? Okay, well, initially I don't know much. I, I start with a probability of 0.7 based on what I've seen and read. I talk to some other people that have information, and maybe somebody's at a 0.9, somebody else is at a 0.6. Um, I'll take those, I'll, I'll, I'll do a weighted average of the 0.9, the 0.6, and my own 0.7, come up with a new belief, and now we talk again. And, and so, um, you know, it, the, those people will have talked to other individuals, so they'll come up with new beliefs. And then I'll update their, their new beliefs with my new belief and, and so forth. And um, the, the idea of it being non-Bayesian is the fact that the weights aren't going to be adjusting over time. So if I was a Bayesian and I started out with my belief of 0.7 and somebody else's belief of 0.9 that there's global warming and somebody else's 0.6, then a Bayesian would have a way of weighting those. And, and depending on the variances and the precision of the different information, you would end up um, averaging those and putting different weights on those things. And, and so it would be, indeed, what you would do is take an average of those and, and that would become your new belief or a, a, an appropriate weighted uh, um, uh, incorporation of those. But um, the second time that we talked, and now my friends have learned things from other friends, um, th as we talked about before in, our, in the previous video, uh, those, those things can be actually quite complicated, right? So now there's a lot to take into account and so forth. And in this model, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to average them again. I'm not going to, to change the weights on different individual because that might be that somebody I know is talking to, to other people who might have better information than this other person. Maybe I should start weighting them more in, on the second time than the first time and so forth. Um, so uh, these aren't going to adjust over time. And it can also be that maybe I put too much weight on my own belief. And there's some experimental evidence that uh, individuals underweight um, neighbors. There's some experiments by Choi, Gale, and Kariv, which find these kinds of things. Um, there, there's a number of experiments that, that have some evidence that people will underweight uh, neighbors. And so um, it, it, this kind of model will, will uh, capture um, that in, in some cases. 
Okay, so um, this model uh, is, uh, we'll talk about the version which comes out of DeGroote in 1974. Um, it was also, there's earlier versions of it due to French and Harari. Um, it's a model that has appeared in a number of different literatures. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I guess the fact that it's been rediscovered and, and used in different literatures uh, attests to the fact that it's a very natural uh, model to write down in terms of, of specific, uh, specifying communication and learning. So there's N individuals. And um, what we're going to work with in terms of a network here is actually going to be weighted and directed. And uh, it's going to be a stochastic matrix. So we'll, we'll work with the notation T as sort of a, a trust matrix. So here, what um, w individuals do is they have some, these are going to be the weights that I put on different individuals when updating my belief. Okay? And so what I do is, is person I, everybody starts at time zero with some initial belief. Right? So we've all got whatever information we had from the past, whatever experiences we have. So we all start with some prior on a uh, big question. You know, uh, um, will there be a recession next year? Or uh, is there global warming? Or um, you know, is this politician a good politician? Um, so we'll all start with uh, our, our beliefs. And um, we're going to put these in 0, 1. You could have these be vectors. You can ha you know, the, the model actually extends uh, quite naturally to have multiple dimensional versions of beliefs and beliefs on many things and, and so forth. We'll just work with a simple case where you've got a, a belief and we'll keep it in 0, 1. So this is my belief of what's the probability that there is global warming. Okay. Now, the belief at time t that I have is just going to be a weighted average of the beliefs of my neighbors, and my neighbors, this is captured through the TIJ, right? So I put some weight, person I put some weight on J's belief, which is captured by TIJ. So stochastic here is telling us that the sum of TIJ's when we sum across J is equal to 1. So this thing is, each one of the TIJ's is non-negative, so I, I can't put negative weight on people. I put uh, some uh, positive weight, and, and out of the people I listen to, I ist, I'm, I'm going to assign a total weight of 1. So it could be that in this model, it could be that TII um, is positive, right? So I put weight on my own past belief. Um, somebody that never listens to anybody would have TII equal to 1, right? That would be that I just listen to myself, I never pay attention, my belief just stays what it is, and you can't convince me of anything, and, and I'm, I'm extremely stubborn. Um, but if I listen to anybody else, then I'm going to put some weight on their belief, some weight on my own belief, and what people are doing is forming a new belief by repeatedly talking to others and uh, incorporating that and, and updating your beliefs. Okay? So very simple, natural updating process. So let's take a quick look at an example. So let's suppose that person one um, listens to everybody equally, right? so a third on everybody. So here we see person one putting weight one third on one, one third on two, one third on three. Person two puts weight a half on, on uh, one and a half on two. So weights one and two equally, but doesn't listen to three at all. Three listens to one and uh, herself, so we get a half on, on one and a half on three. Okay. So that would be the T matrix associated with this, and, and sometimes it's going to be useful to keep track of the diagrams in terms of the cycles and so forth. And here we can see that you know, now we're going to have uh, self-links, self-loops, so some people are listening to themselves, and we've got weights. So now we have a weighted directed matrix, um, and uh, different individuals can pay different attention. This is one where each of the individuals happens to put equal weight on each of their friends. You don't have to have that. We'll look at different examples uh, afterwards. But this is a, a simple starting point. Okay, so now um, what we can do is begin to see how updating works under this. So suppose that, for instance, the initial beliefs of the three individuals were person one started with a belief of zero, person three started with a belief of zero, and it was only person uh, two that started with a positive belief. <clears throat> okay, so person one puts an equal weight on each of these. So they're going to weight a third of... Uh, zero, a third of zero, and a third of one. Their next period belief, so at time zero, they have this belief of person one at time uh, um, one is now a third. 
So after one iteration of updating, they've switched to a belief of a third. Okay? And so you can just do this um, for each individual. This person is waiting a half of a one and a zero. They're going to go to a half. This person just saw two zeros, right? So they're still stuck at zero. So they didn't update at all. And we can see that the amount that the people updated depended on which weights they had and who they were listening to. And, um, but this person's belief now in the, th in the second period now becomes positive because at this point now, you know, it took one period for this person to start having a positive belief. Now, once this person has a positive belief, this person's belief starts going up. And what we can see is through this averaging process, people's beliefs are going to tend to be pulled towards each other, right? The, the, the people with low beliefs are being pulled up to positive beliefs by talking through two, and then eventually the information that passes from two to one passes on to three. And the, the one and twos, uh, these people, one and threes beliefs are bringing two down. And so overall, over time, these things will tend to converge to something, right? And in this case, if you go through, um, it actually converges to two sevenths, two sevenths, and two sevenths, okay? So if you just keep running this process, keep running it, it goes to two sevenths, two sevenths, two sevenths, okay? Um, now you can, uh, we'll learn exactly how you could have guessed the two sevenths, two sevenths, two sevenths in, in a little bit. Um, but it, basically, this is going to be some measure of sort of how influential this particular person too is, because they're the only person that started with a positive belief. And then we can see, you know, what is the eventual belief? Well, everybody came, was brought in by this averaging process towards the same belief, and in this case, it was two sevenths. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, let's work with a slightly different example. So now one where everybody doesn't put equal weight on each other. So now we'll do one where um, uh, we have person one, person two, person three. One and two act as before, but person three now puts three quarters weight on herself and one quarter on person two. Okay, And we switch the beliefs around, so now person one starts with a belief of one. So we can go through this process, right? So here's another example. Um, if you do this over time, you know, person one goes to a third. Here, person three still lags for a little while. Beliefs go to a half. Um, and what would happen in this world, you can go through, now it's going to converge to three elevenths. Okay? It converges to something different than it did before. It depends on what the network looks like, and it also just depends on what those initial beliefs were. So both the shape of the network and the initial beliefs are going to tell us what things converge to. Okay. Now, what's nice about this model is that it's essentially weighted averaging over time, so it's a nice linear system. And this linear system is something that we know a lot about in terms of the mathematics. And these things are going to converge, and we'll have a nice way of talking about what do these numbers turn out to be, how do they depend on the initial beliefs, and how do they depend on the network. So there'll be an explicit solution that we can just calculate out directly in terms of what those numbers are and what those relations are. So that, that's going to be the nice part of the model is it will we'll learn where, what's the limit point of this process. And we can actually also say a lot about the speed of convergence here and how that depends on the network and so forth. Okay, so what's happening here is, you know, when a person talks to their friends, effectively, you know, after one period, they've incorporated information from these people. After two periods, they've indirectly incorporated information from two distances because this information passed on to uh, people that were at distance one um, after you know the first period, and and so what happens is is we end up getting if the, if these people are listening to other individuals, that information goes on and, and gets incorporated by the uh, individual over time. So as time goes on, we've got more reach in terms of where the information is coming in from. And the fact that people are averaging things means that we're going to end up with a nice convergence here. Um, and, and so things, uh, it's going to have nice properties. Other interpretations. So this model actually has a lot of interpretations. So we've been talking about averaging beliefs. We could also think about uh, social influence on actions. So suppose that what I'm doing is I'm just choosing some behavior instead of a belief over time. So think of B, uh, I as behavior. And what I'm doing is actually trying to match the behavior of my neighbors. 
and I pay certain amounts of attention to different people. And so what I do is I try and match what people did over time, right? So, so that's going to be something where you've got, uh, you know, social influence on actions. You could think of how those actions um, uh, work through. Um, there's also some ties to Markov processes and, and uh, probabilities. We can think of these as probabilities of different things. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that uh, as we go along. Um, there'll be also some relationship to, to page ranks and other kinds of things. Um, but we can also, in, in terms of this, you could also just think of this as a game where you're trying to match the actions of your, of your neighbors and, and you want to do that in, um, over time and, and we end up with the same kind of dynamics. So this is going to be a very simple, tractable model. And what we'll do next now is, is start talking about what its convergence properties. When does it converge? What it will converge to? Can we say something about how that depends on the network and so forth?